Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and I'm going to be starting a new tutorial series. Yeah, and, um, some of you guys might know that I am in the middle of a tutorial series right now, but I've been getting a lot of comments saying, do more Unity tutorials. When are, makes, when are you going to do another Unity tutorial? And so that is what I'm going to be doing today. Um, it's been a good stopping point in this Blender Modifiers tutorial series, so I figured why not go ahead and make um, a Unity tutorial series, just in the middle, just to give me a break from Blender, because I've been in the Blender universe for too long, and I might start going, I don't know, a monkey head or something like that, or Andrew Price might be knocking on my door. Anyhow, Blender jokes. I'm bad at jokes. I have no friends. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a HUD. Um, now, the HUD is a significant part of your game, because if you see the HUD and you saw it again, like in a picture, you would think, oh wait, yeah, that's the HUD for that game. Like, for example, Halo. I mean, as soon as I saw the Halo HUD, like, that's what I think of when I think of Halo is Master Chief and their awesome HUD. Because maybe I'm just a game developer. And, yeah. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a HUD. But not just for any game. I'm going to be making a HUD for Storm Strike. That's right. I'm going to be designing the HUD for this game and real time so that you guys can see what I'm thinking about for our game um, in real time. Before we jump into making the background of the HUD, which is going to be all the static objects, don't forget to check out our website up there. We spend a lot of time making it. We post updates right there, Storm Strike, etc. Um, go check it out. Um, don't forget to subscribe to us, because um, if you subscribe, you will never miss a tutorial, and missing tutorials is bad. Um, and then down here, we have our social media, Twitter, Google+, and Instagram. Um, Twitter is at JG and Games, Google Plus is JG and Games, and Instagram is at JG and underscore Games. So, I know that people using the mobile versions don't have annotations yet, so all of those links for these annotations will be below. Um, there was one annotation at the end, and that one will not be there. You'll just have to go to our channel to figure it out, but I'll get to that later. So, let's get started. So, first of all, I'm going to be using two softwares. I'm going to be using Unity for the design of the HUD and how it works. I'm going to be using Text Wrangler to code the HUD and how it interact, how you interact with it. I'm going to be using Photoshop to design it. So let's open up Photoshop by swiping over on our desktop and opening up a new Photoshop window. Alright, so we've got a brand new file here. I'm going to be using my pen and touch tablet to make this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pen and touch tablet on um, by um, it's the Intuos Pen and Touch Medium. Um, you can buy it. I'll put a link to it below um, to say that you can go get it because I'm going to be using that. And I think it really helps if you're a graphics designer or making a like something for your game. I think it really helps. So I'm going to go to New. I'm going to make this. I'm going to call this HUD underscore background. 1920 by 1080, 72 pixels per inch, and transparent background contents. I'm going to hit OK by hitting Enter. And so I'm going to give you guys my process behind this. I'm going to be drawing out the, um, the HUD with the brush tool. And then I'm going to be so that I don't have to go around and play around with the points. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to draw out the shapes and then I'm going to give them their effects. So um, first of all, I need to fill this layer right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this layer white. Actually, correction, Command Z. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill that layer white. So we always have this. Now I'm going to make two folders. I'm going to call the first one hide. I'm going to call the second one keep. So I'm going to keep all my drawings up here in the hide, and I'm going to keep all my keep stuff is going to be all the shapes and stuff. So I'm going to go to hide, and I'm going to create a new layer. And this is going to be the top underscore bar. So I've got an idea for what I want to do um, as because I previously recorded this tutorial. And so I'm going to start drawing it. I'm going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to use a size 4 brush. And I'm just going to use this hard round brush. Now the advantage to using a pen and touch tablet is if I draw a quick line. Um, I'm using white so it didn't show up. My bad. If I draw a quick line... Some brushes you can see it better than others, but I think if it's, I use the soft brush, it shows a little bit better. Yes, so you can see that it fades the brush out as I stop, and that's because it, my the tablet can actually sense pressure. I don't want to search this match. 
Mac. All right, so now I'm going to start drawing. So, I don't know why it's not, there it is. So I'm gonna zoom in right here to my area, which I like, and I'm gonna zoom. Go down like that, I don't like that much. I think I have a bigger eraser, yeah. I'm turning the pin over when I'm doing this. I'm gonna do like that. Now I'm gonna rotate it around by moving my um, my hand on the mouse pad. But if you need to, you can hit R and that also helps make more precise rotations. And so now I'm just going to draw, I need to make sure this is perfectly round because I had this issue when I was recording use this to 90 because I actually drew a curved line and so I had to go in and mess around with how it looked when the scale because it was slanted and curved due to my rotation all right and then I'm just going to rotate it all the way around too bad this angle, oops, not that angle, about like that. And I'm going to draw a line. It almost looks like it needs, no, nope, that actually looks pretty good. So now I'm going to erase this guide line that I made right here. All right, Um. yeah. So now that I've got this, I'm going to hit V, and I'm going to rotate it till it's flat because this is a this is just drawn on, so I can scale this easier. I actually need this to be. Those are my arrow keys, so I need this to be like down here. Oh nope, not that much. I'm gonna do that. That looks good. All right, so now that I've got that, that looks actually really good. So I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it, and I'm going to call this. I'm going to double click on the name to call this bottom bar. All right, now I'm going to rotate this by clicking right here. If I click and not rotate, it gives me these precise numbers. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Now by doing this, I actually notice a flaw that I have. Um, on this bottom one and it's an easy fix all I have to do is scale this out a little bit like that and move it over correction I did it wrong I'm gonna hit it like this I have to scale it out in this direction And since it's still a shape, I mean, I can go ahead and hit enter and brush. Just go ahead and cut that off and then go make a new one. Hmm. Lots of trial and error. Oh, it's good. All right, so now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and start designing how I want the ammo box to look because the ammo box is going to be a static object in this case. So I'm going to go to about right here. And I'm going to go up to so I get a thicker brush. And I'm going to make a no stupid um a new layer. I'm going to call this ammo. And I'm going to put it Give it four, a size of four. I'm going to make it go up like that. And then for this side, I'm going to rotate around. I'm going to do a thing. When I was pre recording this tutorial, I figured out this and I thought it actually looked really cool. Is if you do a line above, then you get. that kind of accented look. That's a good size, I like it. And one reason I did it like that was so that I can go into this bottom bar and I can just go ahead and erase all that right there. 
All right, so that's static, but one thing that's annoying me is I don't look, it doesn't look like I have enough space up there to make a health bar, but I'm gonna go ahead and try. I'm going to hit R, I'm gonna flip this 180 degrees, and actually, I'm gonna rotate this um, 90, so that I can get this. Um, so I'm going to do a longer line up here, I'm going to go down, oops, I did this, I hit some random key, alright, I'm going to make a new layer, call this health, and I'm going to draw, this one is going to be longer, so I'm just going to draw until I find a fit. And now that I think about it, so that it's not as complex, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, I can do this. And I'm going to make a shorter line. Right there. And both these lines need to be equal, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit longer. And now I'm going to go ahead and give it that accent. All right, that's a good health bar. Now that's really all I'm going to be doing in this. I might, if I choose to add a mini map, I will. Um, but right now, I feel like that looks really good. I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna place it right on the line, and I'm gonna go. Fifteen up. All right, that looks good. I like that. So now I'm going to go to this bottom bar, and I'm going to create a shape out of it. So I'm going to grab my pen tool, I'm going to get started. So I'm just going to draw right there, right there, 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 right there, and I'm going to complete this by going all the way around so I get a shape. I'm going to call this a shape. All right, so now I'm going to go to my shape tool um, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm just going to go to this, I'm going to fill it with black, and I'm going to give it a stroke transparent. Alright, now you might be wondering, why am I doing this in black? Well, it's so that I can actually um, use this. I'm only using black because, well, it looks good, and I can see it on the white background. So now I'm going to draw the bottom bar. So First, I'm going to move this into keep. Then I'm going to go to top bar, and this one shouldn't take as long. So I'm going to rotate it because it's always easier. I'm going to grab my pin tool, go right there, that corner, Alright, I'm going to go to shape, and then I have to go back in because this isn't my... And looking at it, it's actually flatter than my first attempt. So if I go ahead and turn off my hide, that looks good. Um, yeah, so now we just need, that's really all we're doing in this one, and so now I'm going to start making the effects. I'm going to go, I'm going to double click on the outside so I get this and I'm going to add a gradient overlay and I really like this I've done one color fade to another but this one is needs to like that so it gives it like that glowing effect I'm gonna bump it down up to 90 all right, now this is one of the reasons I filled it with um, black, was that I could see that right there. And I'm actually going to go in really quick. And on this shape, I'm going to go, and I'm going to change this to white. Now do you see what a difference that makes? That's a huge difference, and I'm going to keep it at white. So now I'm going to copy this gradient. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to click Copy, um, and then I'm going to paste it on there. 
And it's going to do the same thing, but all I have to do is go up here and change this to white. Okay, and one of the things I don't like about this is it seems too flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first add a stroke for safety, and I believe I'm going to use a size 10, um, 40, 30, like that. And I'm going to double click so I can keep going, and I'm going to add an outer glow. Um, now that I look about at it, I'm going to drop this stroke down to 25. Yeah, uh, 28. Ooh. I like outside, really. Give it that, and I've already got a, um, whoops, not a color overlay. I've got an outer glow going where it's just an opacity of 60, um, a spread of zero, a size of 100, a range, uh, that doesn't matter, I got it on 50. And yeah, that's pretty good. And then for the color I've got using, I'm using um, 99EFFF. So I'm just going to type that in. 99EF. Um, this is how I can show you guys. 99EFFF. Um, that's my color code right there for the first one. And then for the second one, I'm using beef. Um, B four E E F three. All right. So that's that gradient I'm using, and so now I'm just going to copy this effect that I'm now finished with, and I'm going to paste it onto my second one. So that's the background right there. I'm going to do a quick export. Hmm. I just noticed something. Bottom bar is annoying because look how it's slanted. Just a tad. I should be able to tilt it not much because of all my effects. I should be fine. And then this one needs to be. Ah, this line is so weird. Because you can never that looks perfect. Alright, so now I've got this, I need to export it. So I am going to turn off my white layer and I'm going to hit um file export export as it's going to be a fairly long one. I'm sorry about that, guys. All right. And then I'm going to export to desktop as HUD background.png. There, it's done. I'm going to go to Unity. Now I'm going to import. And this is how you import all this stuff. And so now you'll see that it makes it like really black. What we're going to do is we are going to go to texture type sprite and just scroll down until you see apply. And that is it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on making the HUD background. If you um, like this tutorial, don't forget to check out our other series. The last tutorial is going to be an annotation right there. Um, but if you are using the um, the mobile version, there will be a link in the. Um, you'll be able to go into our channel and just that's our second to newest upload. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys.